Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, it has been a much long hiatus, but we're back with Season 2 of Star Trek Cerberus Station. Uh, there may be a couple changes that you may notice. Uh, for starters, uh, the Captain Crawford is stepping away for a little bit of time, and uh, Spencer is going to be playing uh, Specialist Naya for a little bit. Filling in as, cap as Captain for a couple episodes will be ELH. And with that, I do not believe we have any further announcements, so let's get right into it. Uh, the captain, or Captain Crawford, has asked first just to do a leaving the station log, which will explain where he is going for the time skip, which will be about three or four months. So, Captain Crawford, please take it away. All right. Personal log, start at 82658.7. Now that we have found the crew of the Enterprise E and brought them back to Deep Space 15, I feel like we've made our biggest step here in the Expanse by completing this rescue mission. But unfortunately, we have even bigger problems at hand. The rescue mission brought us face to face with the Jin Sul, who are extremely hostile and could lead to a conflict that could make this station earn its nickname. In worse news for myself, I won't be able to be here should conflict come quickly, as I've been recalled for additional training and mentorship under Admiral Zier. In my absence, both Captain Worf and the Admiral have suggested Captain Am eh, Hamasi to serve as the interim captain until my return. I personally would feel more comfortable leaving the station in Commander Dolrum's command, but seeing as how he has a family to tend to on the station, I can see why he turned it down. To all of the Starfleet crew members on board Deep Space eh, 15, you're the best that Starfleet has to offer. Make me proud of the work you've done in my absence, and if the Jinsu will arrive before my return, show them why you call this place Cerberus Station. End log. Excellent. And we are now going to take a time skip, which, if for anyone keeping track, is going to be roughly three months. So we're now middle of December 2405, where Captain Hamasi has been captaining the station now for about three months. And so Captain Hamasi, I believe you have a log that you'd like to read. I do indeed. Captain's log, start date 82959.1. Uh, it has been three months since my arrival at Server Station. Most of that time has been spent coordinating with the greater fleet now present in the Expanse. The rest of it has been retraining officers and personnel on proper Starfleet procedure. I will limit myself from making too many comments about my predecessor, yet needless to say it was extremely obvious why they were sent back to Earth for training. It is my hope that when they return, they will be a much wiser station commander for it, assuming of course they return at all. Anyways, the long-running diplomatic talks between the Kasala and the Nalu have ended rather poorly. This is entirely not surprising, given the nature of their relationship. Still, it's going to take weeks to clear the saltwater smell out of the conference lounge. I've made it very clear to Commander Dolrum that restoring the air in the lounge is still a top priority for any idle hands. In other news, the Romulans have chosen to leave the Typhon Pact and remain neutral at this time. I personally don't believe it, and Admiral, Admiral Zier shares my viewpoint. However, the Admiral has allowed them to claim official observer status once more. Uh, whether or not this will prove to be a smart decision, we will find out in time. Finally, before I sign off, I should mention that I have three rather important meetings with the support fleet coming up. The captains of the Apophis, Roosevelt, and Hawking are due to meet with me before the day's end. End log. All right. So, as mentioned, uh, a lot has happened in the last three months. Most notably is that the uh, Deep Space 15 has received an expanded fleet. Uh, six ships in total. Uh, three of them are currently out on exploratory missions, and we'll hear whatever happens to them at some point. Um, as, request, as stated, though, we're going to have a quick look at the... Um, we're going to have... Specialist Naya and um, new, newly promoted Chief Engineer um, ah, <laughs> Keevan. It's been a while. Can you tell? Uh, down in the new conference lounge. Now I'd like to give a quick shout out once again to Falk for making this pretty cool looking set. It's still a work in progress and will change around. So let's have 
uh, Keevan and Naya figure out how they're going to get the salt water smell out of this place. Just because I think it's a good opening scene. Uh, so the Nalu are an aquatic species, and half of this room has been f was flooded for the talks. They're now gone, and this whole thing smells of musty salt water. So, how are you guys going to deal with it? Well, Chief, uh, any ideas? You know, I've been around some very interesting amount of water in places, especially back on Beta Z. However, this is going to stump me. Um, I think, <laughs> you know, as much as I don't want to destroy the new conference room, we might have to just decide to turn the heat up a little bit until it evaporates all by itself. I'm getting. Oh, that might be one of our better choices, but. Um, what material is this floor made out of? So it's a very dense carpeting, um, meant to be, you know, quickly replaceable in case of... To, to, eh. It's a diplomatic room meant to be repurposed into whatever, it, whatever the needs may be. So in the case of dealing with a primarily aquatic species, a lot of the carpet was torn out and replaced with a fairly dense absorption or absorbent uh, absorbative rubber okay well and I assume that the rubber has been replaced with the carpet for the moment but the smell still lingers gotcha all that heat might be our best option but <sighs> what why did we have to flood this conference room? Why, we just got it. But... <sighs> the, the reason was because we have to be open to all new civilizations. You know, as much as I love a new civilization, yeah, I prefer to keep one that kind of also likes to keep a nice, clean, dry space. Yeah. Well... Hmm... Wish I could say that I had another option, but you know, gods know that the captain probably wouldn't necessarily like us to go ahead and par bake the new conference room. So maybe we might need to come up with another idea. Although we'll leave that one in the back pocket. So we got we got ideas. Maybe yeah. we just need to use something like for breeze. I don't know. I've been looking at some old 20th century stuff from Earth just to kind of expand my knowledge, and I just saw something about something called that. You think that something like that would work? Um, can we assume that Rami has been, like, replaced at this point? Absolutely. Or... Um, everyone's favorite station, artificial intelligence, Rami, is back up and running. Well, we might as well ask her. Uh, Rami. Uh, that. Oh, uh, descending through the... or The doors whisk open apparently on their own, and a holographic uh, female walks through. She looks quite similar to the uh, Rami you rem remember, although her walk seems just slightly different. Yes, Specialist Naya. Lieutenant Commander? Um... We're trying to figure out how to uh, get the scent out of this room without having to parbake our new conference room. Do you have any idea of a material that might be good at getting rid of scents? Our lieutenant commander suggested Febreze, which is an old earth freshener, for lack of a better way of putting it, but I'm not sure if that'll work in this case. That is an... Uh, she paused for a split second. Ah, Febreze. Chemical composition picked up and analyzed. It would work quite well. Have you considered flooding? Or have you considered opening the uh, conference room to... Or the conference lounge to the vacuum of space for roughly 24 hours? Um... That's an option, but... Wait, couldn't we just do, like, a deep cleaning of the carpet, or...? 
I could dispatch a cleaning drone if you'd like. Um, let's let's exhaust some of the safer options. Um, <laughs> dispatch some cleaning drones with uh some of the strongest cleaning substances you can find, and let's just hope for the best for now. Of course, I shall di- I shall dispatch station services immediately. And with that, the doors open once again on their own, and Rami walks out. Demater- you see her dematerialize as the doors close. And it's about that time that Captain Hamasi is going to walk in. And because it is her time to meet with the captains of the support fleet. And does do you wish to meet with anyone else at the moment, Hamasi? Uh, I mean, if uh, senior officers are available, yes, but the primarily first part of the meeting is going to be with those captains. Okay. Um, but when I walk in, I take a very noticeable... And I look over at Kevin and I look over at Nia. I thought I made it very clear, uh, officers, that this lounge was to not smell like this. Captain, we are working on a plan, and we have Rami assisting us, and we are going to have this dealt with momentarily for fine momentarily any... we have a cleaning drone being dispatched right now uh, with some of the strongest cleaning substances that this station has she just looks at you blinks a few times and says you mean to tell me you haven't used a cleaning drone before now Kevin is I... just going to kind of keep that little Denobulin ex- extra grin kind of down just like God why did I not think of that no it could have gone better but it, it was either that but Rami also suggested uh, exposing this room to the vacuum of space for 24 hours and so we thought the cleaning drone was a safer option There's a pause, and it's very clear that Hamasi is letting the silence seek, sink in before she finally says, before it gets to start, you know, when it starts getting a little bit uncomfortable. Right. When this meeting is over, you're opening this thing to the void of space, and we'll hold meetings in my ready room from the time that this room is open to space. Is that clear? Hi, Captain. Hi. Very good. And then I just sort of move over to my spot at the table. All right. And then as I sit down, there's a squish. I stand back up. I pick up the seaweed, and I just hold it out so that both of the gentlemen can see it. <clears throat> I, I take it. <laughs> um, Is that all from... Yeah, that's all you need from us, Captain. Yes, uh, please vacate the premises. I have a uh, eyes or ears only Captain level discussion to have here. Very well. Also, apparently, I can English good today. Uni- <laughs> uh, Universal Translator mix up. It'll be fixed. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, just as the engineering folks make to leave, the uh, the door hisses open, and in walk two captains. Roughly the same time, the lift from the upper floor lowers down, and the third walk out. Uh, so I would like to introduce uh, Captain Conal Nilan, who is the captain of the USS Hawking. Uh, captain Kalos Crowley, who is captain of the USS Roosevelt. And Captain Mara Vohal, captain of the USS Apophis. I believe um, each of my players had come up with a, or gave me an idea for captain and a support ship. So if you feel comfortable running these and these captains during the meeting, go for it. Alrighty. So uh, Hamasi, of course, greets each captain in turn, says their name, shakes their hand, all the pleasantries, uh, invites them to sit down, and says. Apologize for the smell. Apparently, I need to have a word about urgency with my engineering staff. Uh, thus, I will try to keep this meeting uh, brief so that we all do not die from overexposure. Uh, Mr. Crowley, uh, what is the status of the Roosevelt? 
Those of us ready to go, give us the word and we'll start exploring. Indeed, I'd like you to handle, and I hand you a pad as I say this, I'd like you to handle uh, Sector 7 Alpha, uh, specifically because we've had a, shall we say, less than savory experience with a new species. I believe you may have read the logs about them. The Enterprise E crew. Correct. Very well, I'll make sure that the crew is aware of this potential threat and will be on standby for any action. Very good. Uh, Mr. Nalan, what is the status of the Hawking? Uh, Hawking seems to be in tip-top shape. We've hit a couple bumps on our trip here, but nothing that the engineering crew couldn't handle. Very good. I have orders here, and I pass you a pad. I have orders here for the Hawking to begin immediately uh, surveying the Transwarp hub. Uh, we do not need a full mapping, but it would be good to know where more of these things led. The last thing we want is more Tholians coming out of gates when we least expect them. Of course. Would you like me to get started on that ASAP, I assume? Uh, after this meeting, yes. Of course. And then to Vahal, who I'm not going to talk to myself, so McCall, you're going to have to do this one. Very well. <laughs> Uh, so, Captain Vahal, uh, what is the status of the Apophis? Uh, she smiles warmly. All is in order, Captain. Very good. I would like you to assist the Roosevelt for the time being. Uh, should it prove necessary, I hand her a pad. Should it prove necessary, or you deem it relevant, uh, I've authorized uh, via the Admiral for you to explore deeper into that same territory that we just rescued the Enterprise E from. Again, this is at your discretion. Understood. Should we... Ah, and she pauses for a split second. In case there are other species that are at the mercy of these Jin Sul, is that... Should, are we allowed to help them? I've had a uh, few words with the Admiral about this. Uh, unfortunately, the Prime Directive comes into play here. Until those species make a diplomatic plea aka one of them asks for asylum, we are more or less working with our hands tied here. Uh, unfortunately, it's a situation similar to very old Klingon uh, culture, if you're aware with how Klingons used to treat their subjects. Hmm. Distasteful, but understandable. Hmm. Indeed. And then, you know, Hamasi relaxes a little bit and smiles and says, with the business out of the way, I wanted to make sure that uh, it's very clear that while I'm here at the station, you all are welcome to requisition uh, anything that you might need for your journey, your ship, uh, as long as you are not requisitioning my personal store of liquor. You will get a raised eyebrow from Crowley. Mara just nods. Must be some damn good liquor if we can't have any of it. Oh, I've been curating the collection for about 20 years now, ever since my journey to the Gamma Quadrant. It's a uh, bit of a hobby, if you will. <laughs> and Nalan will just kind of steeple his fingers. Would you be able to tell me some of the procurements you've made so I might be able to make some of my own? Hmm. I'll send you a uh, rather extensive list after this meeting. Uh, however, unless anyone has any orders of business, I will let everyone get to it. And I look around, giving anyone an opportunity to speak. Uh, Crowley will just get up at that moment, as, as he's taking that as a approval of dismissal. He'll yep. just pull on his shirt, and he'll uh, nod his head to everyone. It's like, Captains? Yep. He'll and Hamasi does very much the same. Once everybody's starting to stand up, she, you know, strains her uniform and heads on out. All right. Okay, so we are going to move. We're going to move the clock ahead about six hours or so. Does anybody have any scenes that they wish to do uh, between that? I do have one. Okay. Where would you like to be, uh, and who would you like it with? My ready room okay. with Dull Room and Demos. Okie dokie. The two Ds. You got it. Captain's office. Okay. Out with the old, in with the new. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we also have a Klingon. Oh, okay, Klingon. <laughs> yeah. What Klingon? 
<laughs> and you wanted ball. Demos in here as well. I you have yes. Midas, but not Demos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, your, re your ready room door chimes, and in walk both Commander Dolrum and Lieutenant Commander Demos. All right. Set down my mug of coffee, and I say, uh, gentlemen, please have a seat. I'll sit. Captain, what can we do for you? Well, Commander Dolrum, I wanted you here uh, because you were the one, or at least to my knowledge, that was in charge of the away mission. Uh, this is in reference to the Jin Sul. And I look very pointedly at Demos. I, we haven't really had a time to talk about this at length, and I wanted to give everyone time to get their side of the story in. Uh, Mr. Demos, can you explain to me why there is a recorded five death uh, of the Jin Sul on record? They didn't want to stay down. They kept getting back up and continued firing, pressing us. As we tried I to retreat. I see, and at no point you just... Let me put this a different way. It didn't occur to you that perhaps the first sign of violence to leave the area, no? Well, we tried to make contact with them. They fired first. I tried to set up a force field and to try to engage further with them. They continued to be hostile. Well, I will be blunt here. It does not look good. While you all were, or at least while those of you on the lunette were making proper first contact, the boarding party that sort of slipped in unnoticed, or quote unquote unnoticed, escalated tensions and completely sabotaged any hope we had at a peaceful resolution to this. Uh, Mr. Dolrum, what are your thoughts on this matter? My thoughts are they weren't talking. Uh, we tried to establish everything um, we could to establish communication, and they started firing first in acting of self-defense. We all acted. Uh, I would have liked to let a smaller death count. But we also were able to uh, recover our citizens, which we were amounting the rescue mission that we were given uh, for that task. Well, I'm certainly not going to downplay the success of your mission. Uh, I have gotten quite a number of letters from those involved with the Enterprise E crew. Uh, and of course, rescuing Starfleet officers is a top priority. However, while this will not be a former reprimand on either of you, I want to be very clear here that deaths like this will not be tolerated in the future. Have I made myself clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Very good. On a more lighter note, uh, Mr. Demos and Mr. Dolrum, I notice that we are experiencing a 5% decrease in efficiency with our tactical drills. Uh, any insights on that? Just looked at Dolrum for a second. I was like, oh, I've put more focus on the civilian side of things as of late, but I can redirect some attention back towards operational sides. Just trying to get the station up and running appropriately. Uh, if I'm not here, I have a couple of young you know, security officers in the wings that I'm grooming to take charge. And hopefully that, um, well, if I'm not here, they can still get the job done without my input. Is one of your prodigies Dura? No. Hmm. Interesting. I've heard good things about Dura. Uh, I thought I'd get your feeling on the matter. In my opinion, for Dura, she needs more training and guidance. She needs to not blindly follow orders to attack a fellow officer. Fair judgment. And what say you, Mr. Dolrum? I think Dura needs a little bit more fine-tuning to uh, be able to be put in charge. However, putting in charge of small tasks or starting to get those um, those beginning leadership roles wouldn't be a bad bad choice um we have been focusing on the civilian sides and getting even some civilians uh with security training uh up and running considering we're now kind of see we are seeing a major influx of civilian and federation uh officer uh people on the station so uh we do need to rebalance everything uh dura would be a good choice to start looking at 
Very good. See to it that uh, we take this feedback and we move with it forward. Uh, one further thing, uh, specifically for you, Mr. Dolrum, I hand you a pad. I would like the uh, refining station in the lower decks to be made operational. I believe we can start refining some of the ambient gases of the Carceri Nebula, and we can be putting it to a more, shall we say, useful purpose. I would tend to agree now that we have the personnel on the station and have less of a skeleton crew that we started out with. We can start using part, the parts of the station um, that we haven't been able to, such as the refinery. Uh, being able to refine some of the gases, even to the surrounding planets that are uninhabited that we could possibly mine, uh, would make us very much a destination for the uh, ships that are coming through. My thinking, exactly. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. You are dismissed. Captain. Aye, sir. If I may, one more thing before I go. Of course. I am deeply regretful of my actions and taking those lives. I would like it to be on record that if this culture wishes to seek extradition against me, I will comply with them. It has been so noted. And personally, off the record, I think that's very noble of you. I don't like taking life. I don't think anyone in Starfleet does, but I understand your sentiment. And on that note, the captain's uh, badge uh, chirps. In fact, all of your badges chirp, and Lieutenant Darval's even-toned voice comes over. All senior staff, please report to the operations center. Hmm. Now well, let's go see what's on fire. Duty calls. Uh, oops. We are going to the operations center. <laughs> you emerge to the traditional site of the Carceri Nebula and the Borg Transwarp Hub on the large screen. Uh, Lieutenant Derval has indicated one of the lower gates uh, that is closer to the core of the structure. One that has uh, only recently begun being mapped by your Slipnir class scouts. Captain, I'm yeah, Captain, Commander, I'm detecting a large increase in outbound particles from this particular gate. It seems that something is being, if I had to make a supposition, I would say that something is being pushed out of this portal. Are you able to get a accurate reading on perhaps the size of this object? I, I, I am, sir. Uh, this, this, it appears to be roughly the size of the old uh, K7 bucket stations, sir. Uh, brings up the specifications. If I, I believe that we're looking at roughly. 700 meters um, in diameter probably three four or probably 300 meters in height it appears to be a station of sorts or a very large ship and it, it is emerging from the aperture now and we are going to cut to the main screen where in pure dramatic fashion. There is a burst of greenish blue light from the gate indicated and a object that looks sort of like an unfinished uh, wheel or Deep Space Nine perhaps with half of its uh, structure torn out of it is thrown cartwheeling and spinning in chaotic directions or an all around just as the support fleets has moved away. Um, Captain, may I suggest yellow alert? Good thinking. Uh, let's proceed to yellow alert. Uh, what can we tell if, uh, now that it's in our space, Mr. Duvall? He does a little bit of a uh, uh, cursory scan. It is, it is not projecting any energy that I'm able to tell, nor am I able to determine any life signs on board. Hmm. And this, and it, these, it, as he does so, this, for I'm just going to call it the other station, mm -hmm. uh, begins to slowly right itself, uh, bringing a chaotic orbit into a more stable orbit, uh, so that it, and it begins spinning slower, and roughly reaches halfway between you and the uh, hub, and slows to a halt. 
Right, uh, Mr. Darval, open a channel, please. Aye, Captain. Opening frequencies. To our unknown visitors from parts unknown, this is Captain Hamasi of Starbase Deep Space 15, also known as Cerberus Station. If you are receiving my message, please make any sign that you are hearing us. There is no re no reaction, Captain. We are not. There is no receiving, or no one is transmitting, sir. Hmm. Check the lower bands. Let's be extra sure. Of course. And at this point, if one of the si people rolling uh, science officer, I think Lakila, is yeah. in that role, or if Commander Area would like to stroll onto the bridge, either or could roll me an insight plus science. And the station, of course, can assist with sensor science. Uh, this will be a difficulty of one. Well, Aria has a science of two, so I would recommend someone besides her. Fair enough. I, I can roll with uh, Ilya. Okay. All right, so, so... Oh, this is another activation for him. It is indeed. I was just going to say that. Buff him. And then I'll roll for the station. Okay. Sure, let's just... Go ahead and bump his signs up to a five. Okay. Station could assist successfully if Naya rolls. Okay. Oh boy, complication. Oh right, right <laughs> off the start. Cool. Okay, so um, you are detecting that there is. Let's see, one degree success. There is. Plus one momentum. Who's keeping track? ELH is. Cool. Mm -hmm. There is no life signs on board the station. In fact, there is almost no power at all. Uh, it does seem to be dead. The only pa There is a minute power source coming from what would be the um, quote-unquote bottom of the station. Uh, there are three down. There are three prongs pointing downward, connected with a circular outer hull. There. And just sort of at the top of that structure, there appears to be some sort of power. It doesn't appear to be fusion generation or even matter antimatter, but there's something there. Uh, Captain, for all purposes, the station seems, or whatever this thing is, seems dead. Uh, there's no life signs that I'm picking up. There's no power save for some very night minute readings at the what appears to be the bottom and the top of it sir hmm well we know something is controlling it otherwise it would not have righted itself and assumed its current position uh mr dolro miss number on away team head over with environmental suits and discern the nature of this energy reading hi sir we'll ready a slip near class and head that way I should also mention that there is going to be a complication. You just haven't figured it out yet. Oh yeah, yeah. I figured. I'm mm -hmm. telling you just so that I haven't for, for people yep. haven't thought I missed things because I'm I am sneaky, sneaky GM. <laughs> okay, so who's going on a slip near? Let's take. Hmm. I think Commander Area would go. Okay. If we got technical issues, I think Kivan would be going wise plan. Dorum will be there. Okay, um, we'll go. I will bring Dora just for some extra security. Okay. So Naya is staying behind and Dora is going. Gotcha. Okay, so um, pilot um, would we just have Mud as pilot? Mud's the default pilot. That makes sense. Okay. I'll go down to the slip near. I'm missing someone. It's area. There's area. I believe everyone has someone. No, I'm missing someone. Who am I missing? Keevan, Doldrum, Daria, Dura. Demos. Demos, thank you. I put Midas, Midas out, there. but not Demos. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, you depart the station without any issues. 
and you make your way towards the station itself. Um, at this point, I would like... Um, so, Mud, as soon as you get within about a thousand meters of the station, you are beginning to experience a significant amount of stress on the uh, ship. Um, it's become, it's like it's gas mileage is just starting to go through the roof. So much extra, uh, so much extra mom fuel is needed to just push f further and further and closer to the station. Um, you're also noticing that the uh, shield energy uh, and that of the navigational deflector is beginning to show signs of a uh, waning. I'll take care of Mud. Mud will announce, we are hitting some complication. Uh, somebody scan the surrounding area. It seems like there's a huge amount of gravitational drag here. Um, so I we'll guess uh, we'll have we'll have area roll for this one. All right. Uh, reason science, I assume. Uh, reason science would be good. Uh, ship can assist in this case with computers plus science. And the difficulty? Uh, difficulty will be two. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for it. I got the ship. Coolio. And two Aerie success. Area makes it. So something about this, uh, this... So this station appears to begin... Um, has deployed some sort of um, energy... F or some sort of field that is literally sucking all ambient radiation around it, sort of like a siphoning field. Um, it seems to be draining all of the energy, including kinetic energy, um, shield energy, even gravitational energy. This is... It, Sorry, it, it's draining kinetic energy? It's draining every form of energy imaginable. How rapidly? Uh, fairly weakly at the moment. Um, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be... A f thankfully, you guys are protected inside the ship. If you were to exit into space right now, it might prove troublesome. Uh, however, inside this, th this field seems to be external to the station, not internal. Well, gentlemen, uh, that's the long and short of it. We're dealing with something that is uh, eliminating the energy in the area. Um, I would recommend coasting in on thrusters only, or at least as uh, little momentum and energy as we can. Shutting down and going to thrusters only, although it worries me that if it's siphoning energy, we might not be able to get out of there. I'll try to see if I can keep some of the um, reactors working, even at low power mode, just to be able to preserve us some energy, just in That might work. I would suggest putting the ship into low power mode as soon as we dock. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to bring us back to the main sheet and... Um, show you guys the station and then you guys can tell me whereabouts you're docking because that is going to all right so i'm just going to make it bigger on screen so that people can get a better idea of what they're seeing and i'll make it upright just for the sake of argument so there are several there appears to be what uh several what appear to be docking pylons or maybe even solar panels on the outside of several of the of the three large arms. Uh, there is the power source coming from the bottom of the station. Uh, there are several, now that you're close enough, you're able to see several holes in, uh, in the station itself. And then there is the central uh, geodesic dome area. Might I suggest maybe one of these pylons like this one? As a, as a docking spot? I'd be okay with that. All right. Okay, so if Mud could please make me a um, control plus helm or control plus contest, uh, ship can assist with a 
um, engines plus uh, let's see I'm doing power so I think engine plus engineering in this case would be better what's the difficulty uh, this will be a diff uh, difficulty of two and I'm going to spend some threat to increase the complication range 18 to 20 all right I'm going to take F for a third die all right you're taking threat for the third or momentum the m third momentum the third momentum okay because I have cautious con on ah. We have caution, ca cautious con on mud. And I'm assuming starship pilot or close combat maneuvers or precision flight control would all apply. Either of any of those would function. Yep. Ooh. Three oh, degrees yeah. success. Nice. And who's rolling the ship? It's already rolled. We got already zero. rolled. Oh, it's up there. Yeah, I see it. Okay. So you got three degrees, so I believe that is the um, one momentum for you. Nice. Okay, so you pull into the station. <clears throat> it begins... Okay, and we shall move you guys to this map. It's down here somewhere. <clears throat> and Dolor will announce, make sure your environmental suits are on. Okay. So every, um, it's very difficult. The shuttle expends almost all of its chemical thrusters just to get you guys to the station. And the environmental uh, sensors are reporting that the external area is reaching almost absolute, well, abs it is now absolute zero, where almost everything has stopped. And the, yeah, there you are. Michael GM's good. Okay, so you dock, and this is the main hallways that you're going to be in. So every sound made is, well, unhearable. Even though you get the sense that as you step, the sound would reverberate for a long time. There is no sign of any creature comforts, so there's no um, there is no carpeting on the floor. There's no um, padding. There's no paint. There's not even any good painted drywall. It's all steel, hard metal, hard angles, and you swear that those lights were not on a few a few minutes ago. Question for you. Yes. Um, are we now being affected by the uh, absorption? Uh, you are not. Uh, as you are inside the station, the field does not affect you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Commander Area would like to run a life sign scan. Of course. But not typical life signs. Uh, things like silicon, things like... Uh, Basically, anything that would not be on a standard life sign scan. Okay. Uh, so this will be uh, Insight Medicine. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three, just because you're looking for non-standard stuff. All right. Uh, xenobiology applies a focus. Xenobiology would indeed apply, yes. Excellent. I'm going to spend that one momentum. Unfortunately, I, I do not. But... Okay. Uh, as you continue to sc as you scan uh, your device, despite the fact that it had a full charge and should last at least a week without being charged again, uh, it looks like it's been dr with the act of activating it. Uh, you seem to have drained the power cell on it by at least by about ninety percent. So your tricorder. Actually, one yeah. second, because mm -hmm. it's been a while. Uh, doesn't a medical tricorder give me an advantage? Let me check. Um, good question. Actually, I don't know that answer. Because I know the engineering one does. Uh, I'm not finding it, yeah. so I'd, I'd say whatever you think is fair. Okay. Um, we'll run with that for the time being. Um... I mean, if engineering gives an um, advantage on engineering stuff, then yeah, I'd say that a 
medical thing gives an advantage on medical life sign stuff. Okay. So I pass, but I still drain yeah. the uh, ever-loving hell out of my tricorder. Yeah, that works. So you do detect several... Um, they're not... Um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? They're not individual um, entities of silicon, but there are massive amounts of it um, pooled up in areas near near to the inside of the station. Um, it appears... The readings appear to fluctuate. And now that you're on board the station there is a very subtle hum that is starting to start that is starting to thrum through the naked deck plates it's very very faint but you swear this thing was dead and not able to make anything of this make enough power to do anything well commander uh i'm pleased to report that we're probably dealing with a silicon-based life form uh however as you can probably feel uh they probably know we're here yeah i'm getting a strange feeling of being watched and the point that the station is starting to come to life around us makes that feeling even go come up a little should we progress towards the energy or should we progress towards the central dome uh, my vote's personally for the Central Dome, but you are in charge here, sir. Well, this is a team effort. I personally think the Central Dome would be give us a lot of the answers we are looking for. Okay. I would think so too, Commander. And it might be a good idea just for us to be aware of these other life forms or any other odd t activity that starts happening while we progress to the state. Agreed. We'll all be kind of making note of anything we see. <laughs> okay. Let's progress. Okay. Now, are you go Um, I would like you all to please roll me... I guess this version... How would stealth checks work in this game? I'd say a presence plus con test. That or uh, fitness plus security is another yeah. good one. Yeah. Um, okay, it will either be presence plus security or fitness plus security, just to see how stealthily you guys move. Um, each of you should be aiming for one degree of uh, one degree of success. Um, however, in order so that we don't generate stupid amounts of momentum, only the roll that generates the most momentum will go to the pool. Okay. Well, I just got us four successes. And, okay. <laughs> That's... We, wow. Wow. We oh, my God. <laughs> Demos oh. is the only one that didn't crit. Yeah. <laughs> That's still pretty... I mean, he is a fairly, fairly heavy uh, machine boy. So, <laughs> even that is... That's... Yeah. There were four ones in that. Yeah. Y'all. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so that's, that's three points of momentum to the pool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you enter into the adjoining ring, so that would have been similar to Deep Space Nine's inner promenade ring, um, which I couldn't find a good template for, so we're just going to continue using this. There is, again, no sign of any life whatsoever. Uh, there is signs that this place may have once been heavily used, so there is debris strewn about, there is several... Um, what appears to once have been uh, stores, but there's a thick layer of dust over everything. Uh, still no oxygen or air or atmosphere of any sort. Um, oh. the, station, um, the station begins to uh, churn to life a little bit more. Um, Captain, on the... Or Captain Hamasi, on the station... Um, Lieutenant Lakila will inform you that the station's siphoning field is now definitely noticeable and it is beginning to expand. Uh, it's expanding at roughly the rate of point, or what's good decimal levels, uh, roughly uh, point, or ah, point two AU uh, per hour. Um, so there is it's most likely not going to impact the station for several hours, but the threat is there. 
Uh, Hamasi to away team. Wait, away team, please come in. Would we get it, or would our com badges be drained? I'm a. Fr that is, if uh, the captain wishes to spend a point of momentum, I'll let it go through. I will spend the point of momentum. All right. So just as the away team enters on board into the uh, wrecked promenadal area, it's a very staticky connection. But Commander Daldrum, your com badge begins to spar uh, speak. I hit my badge. This is Dalrum. You're cutting in and out, Captain. Well, in that case, uh, please inform me of your status. Are you seeing any life signs? Are you seeing any uh, power generators? What are you seeing over there? The station seems to be coming to life as we walk through it. It detected what we think might be life forms, but our instruments are cutting in and out, uh, and we can't get a clear read. Very good. Uh, you are to find the power source and or any life forms and mount a rescue operations. However, you are in a time limit. We have approximately six hours before the dampening field will start to affect the station and we will be forced to take more drastic measures. Aye, right, sir. We've advanced to the inner ring. Uh, we were going to start our search at the main uh, uh, dome to see if we can further disseminate where the power generation uh, readings that we were getting uh, are originating from. Very good. Keep me informed as you can. Hamasi out. All right, Captain. Away team out. Okay. So, uh, Commander Area, as you guys mm -hmm. are moving in through the uh, broken promenade area, your uh, both your tricorder and Lieutenant Demos's. Um, detect uh, the briefest hint of movement roughly uh, 40 meters behind you or so. Uh, you guess I glance back in that direction. Do I see anything? You see something. Uh, what you thought might have been um, a wrecked uh, piece of rubble um, has shifted, revealing a creature that looks something like this. Uh, so um, I will just show it to two players. I will show that. So it stands roughly um, nine feet tall and about three or three feet wide at the shoulders. There's no visible head and the shoulders sort of just mold directly into very elongated arms. Its uh, legs are I think the phrase is digitargrade, I believe. Uh, the backwards leg seen on like flamingos. And the ins uh, inside its colorful barrel chest, there is a small flickering of some sort of internal power source. But it is currently still lying down and has only just begun to sh shudder its way to life. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, you're seeing this as well, right? Affirmative. Uh, Commander, uh, you're going to want to look over here. I turn around and go, Oh, what are we looking at? Running a scan now, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Now that you're up close and personal, um, another insight medicine, I believe. Or actually, in this case, probably reason medicine would make the most sense. Um, xenobiology or even, me even uh, material sciences would work for this. Uh, difficulty? Uh, difficulty of two. I and will spend one momentum. Someone can assist, since now everyone's looking at it. If anyone wants to assist with either uh, reason engineering or reason medical. Or heck, even reason science at this stage, I'll take anything. I could do reason engineering. Okay. Go for it. I'm... I, I am going to interpose myself to be the closest thing to it. That's fair. In case, but I'm not going to have my weapon drawn at all. I'm just, you know, yep. getting close to it, looking at it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, that is a grand total of five successes from all of you, so three momentum. Mm -hmm. So this indiv this thing is, it might be alive um, in the barest sense of organic. It's more of a biotechnical construct than anything that might be 
a lie might be you know birthed it's hard to say where the organics uh, end and the inorganics begin but this thing has a built-in quote-unquote organ for lack of a better term in its chest area which appears to be a well it's well you know how uh, replicators can also uh, dereplicate things the waste recyclers mm -hmm. it's fairly close to that it will break it appears to be a material breakdown um, center and you do see a small cable that appears to be running from its posterior d into the floorboards uh, this cable has just begun to light up and there is power that is surging into it it hasn't received enough power to actually do anything yet but it is beginning to move about and yes it is well, my best off. guess is uh, we're either about to find ourselves at the end of a disintegration beam or we're about to talk to one of the stewards of the place. I'm hoping the latter rather than the former. I'll just raise up one hand and tilt my head to the side, see if it copies. It is still lying down and does not make any moves at the moment. Uh, by your, by the people uh, watching it. Uh, with engineering tricorders, you can see that it is more or less at about 45% energy. Looks like it's nearly at half power. I would definitely agree we need to kind of keep a more open potential dialogue with this being. Mm -hmm. And a, well, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dolorm. Dolorm will say, well, our last first contact didn't go so well. Let's hope this one goes a little bit better. Well, I got two of those shield spikes. If it does try anything, we could try and contain it quickly. And at 50% power core, um, there begins a sluggish movement as it uh, flexes its legs, uh, curls up into a something akin to a fetal position, uh, reorients itself to the deck plate and slowly begins to stand up. Uh, there's a uh, set, um, it's quote unquote eyes that are running vertical f from its, oh, it doesn't have a head per se, top of its body down to roughly chest area. Uh, flicker uh, one right after the other, bright orange color. And it begins to look around as it gets up slowly. Is it having any trouble getting up? Uh, no. Um, there was a minor bit of instability until its uh, gyros kicked in. It found its footing and has begun to pick itself up. I'll just wave my hand to Dara for her to, like, step back a little further, like, for everyone else, too. We'll all well, comply. Yeah. The dr yeah, um... Okay. Without sp without apparently acknowledging anyone's presence, and with the cable still plugged into its posterior, the drone immediately uh, looks around the area, goes to the nearest um, part or the nearest piece of rubble that has been dislodged, uh, picks it up, and then its barrel chest opens, and it begins to feed it into the uh, recycler contained within itself. Dolorum will just look at it. Is this one of the, like, garbage men? I mean, for lack of a better term, that does seem to be the case, sir. Uh, uh, Commander, it could either be that or it's just trying to pick up some nutrients for itself. If it starts showing any more signs of sentience, for lack of a better word, if, with your permission, I would like to try to approach Let's give it some time to kind of activate, and then we can look at approaching and making more of a contact. Hey, Kivon? Yes? The station started coming to life when we started showing up. What if it started to come to life because it's able to drain from the surrounding area? 
Dewey doesn't have anything at all to do with us. It's just the fact that it found a spot where it can consume energy. That thought did cross my mind as well, Lieutenant Commander. Like that like, could be possible. And as you're uh, watching it with your tricorders out, uh, you notice that um, its internal power core quickly reaches 100 uh, percent as it's consuming and converting the discarded matter back into energy, and it continues to eat. Uh, even after 100%. Uh, however, in this case, it seems to be shunting any excess power back through the uh, posterior cable back into the station's power grid. I have a crazy idea. I'm all for crazy, Lieutenant Commander. Considering I'm not a lump of metal right now on the floor of the station, power is not being dampened inside. It looks hungry. The shuttle should have at least a power core that we can bring to it. And it wouldn't be affected by the dampening field. It's a thought, although we might need those power cores to get off the station, unless it only drains until it's fully charged and then stops da draining, like the dampening field is a protection program in the station's core. The damping field's targeting all forms of radiation energy source, isn't it? That is correct. It's not a bad idea that it's kind of sitting in this, you know, static when radiation filled nebula we're all stuck in. So. There is a lot of fuel around. There is. Uh, Commander, er, uh, area. I will. Yes. I will give you one point of determination and tap your value. Starfleet can be a bit idealistic at times. Mm -hmm. And basically trigger your paranoia. This station does not... Like, this station survived without power for so long, and it was literally kicked out of the Borg Nexus. There's something not right here. Yeah, I'll take it. All right. So, uh... It's at this point that I don't quite go to my phaser, but I turn to uh, Commander Dolrum and I say, Sir, this is uh, not sitting right with me. Uh, the fact that it is quite literally sapping the energy out of a surrounding space and doesn't appear to be reacting to our presence leads me to believe that either this is a rather well-constructed honey trap meant to lure us in and then tr entrap us like a certain... Uh, phenomenon that the Enterprise D ran into long, long ago, or uh, this is a uh, species that simply consumes and moves on, in which case the station is a danger. I see your concern, Commander, although we don't want to act hasty to make these assumptions. It could just be that the station is trying to regain its power after not having it for so long. Basically running on emergencies until just now where it now has the ability to recharge. I would still propose, sir, that we find a means of stopping the energy drain as soon as possible. Now that I do not disagree. For that, I think we need to head deeper into the core. Okay. Um, at this point, the drone has made absolutely no indication of your presence, and it's been a—you've uh, been on the station now. I would say about an hour in total, and the 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 thrumming is getting a little uh, has been getting steadily louder, so that only once you actually pay attention to it do you realize, oh, this is actually louder than it was ten minutes ago. Um, then there is now um, a more rhythmic uh, pulse to the humming as well. A, se a, a separate heartbeat over top of the background noise. And so uh, am I understanding you guys wish to head towards the power core now? Uh, towards the central core. Central core. Oh, you're still heading towards the quote-unquote ops center? That was... Uh, My plan. The geodesic? Okay. 
Cool. As you begin to move out, uh, you do see several more of these drone creature things. What did I just realize? I haven't focused the stream. I apologize. Um, <clears throat> uh, along the path. They are, each one of them is showing a very similar pattern. They're all slowly waking up and are converting station debris back into energy. And with that, we will transfer you guys to Ops. Copy that. Ops Center. Given the size of the geodesic dome, it's actually very surprising how small the operations center appears to be. Um, looking up, you see the ge through the um, very thick um, transparent steel or transparent metal of some sort or another um, dome windows. Uh, the chaoticness of the of the uh, Carceri Nebula, although in near vicinity, you swear that it is has never looked this calm. There is several um, computers that are only now. Um, just blinking to life as the sounds of activity or computerized activity once again appear on the some of the screens in the area. Um, again, no creature comforts whatsoever. Even the chairs here are, well, they're not really meant for humanoid or traditionally humanoid creatures. Bipedal, definitely, but not quite comfortable enough to sit long term. Oh yeah, I should also mention that you see two of these individuals. At the far ends of the station, or of the uh, op center. I'm just zooming out for stream. <clears throat> and they begin to take notice once you have entered. Players. They look like this, uh, fairly long triangular heads on top of a more humanoid body than what the uh, garbage collectors were. Uh, again, a very sleek form, humanoid-ish, but disturbingly not. Uh, no immediate signs of eyes on this model, but their points of their triangular head do seem to light up and flash with the intensity and direction of flashlights. They begin to look around slowly. Everyone be on your guard. Um, I'm gonna walk up to one of the computers and just look at it for a second. Like, do I do, notice any like data entry ports or anything like that? Um, uh, yes, there are several ports on the computers themselves. Uh, none of them appear to be, um, you know, plug and play with anything that Starfleet has, or that you're even familiar with in your past there, Demos. Most of the, uh, most of the indicators you see appear to be that of station statuses in a, uh, the language may be not something you're, you, you're familiar with, but it's easy enough to see uh, progress bars, and you see the progress bar at roughly 10%. Demos, what are you seeing? Mm, something's happening, something at 10%, I want to say, or whatever percentage they're using, but it's climbing. Uh, I have a bad idea. Full of them, full of them today, apparently. If we can bridge the tricorder to the computer system, I can connect to the tricorder and attempt direct contact with the computer core. Possibility of, well, quantum brain damage might occur? It's more than a possibility, Lieutenant Commander. It's probably inevitability. Well, what's life without a bit of risk, right? Right. 
Other than that, we can try and run the tricorders in tandem to see if we can get uh, the Universal Translation Program to work a little faster. Well, as long as one of you is keeping an eye on whatever those are, I motion at the triangle heads, I can start on the uh, translation front at least. Start on the translation. Demos, let's not connect your head into the computer quite at this point. Let's exhaust some other options before we fry a brain. Aw, oh, you care about me. <laughs> yes. I'll keep an eye on the guards. So fan out to a station and see what uh, each of you can do. Demos will wander over to Kivon and is like, Oh, ideas? I think what we need to do is see if we can try to d discern what we're seeing here with these progress bars. There's got to be some way to communicate with these, whether they're sentient, whether they're biological, whether they're mechanical. There's got to be something to them. If we have to communicate with them, we have to figure out how to communicate. The other thing that's kicking around in my head, the security side of me, what pushed it through the gateway? That's something that I've been wondering about as well, Lieutenant Commander. Like I said, the more we look at things, the more I'm doubling down on the fact that this is a booby trap. I'm still not convinced that it's a booby trap. We've had strange things happen with Borg technology before. It could have been that this was even stuck in the gateway, slowly go, slowly traveling until it finally emerged. It's happened before, so. Okay, so who's doing what? I'm doing the translation thing for sure. Okay. I believe that this should be reason plus science. Um, it's a predictable enough language, uh, so I will say it is a difficulty of two. Okay, I'll spend a momentum. Don't think I've got a focus that applies here, so just gonna roll and see what happens. Nope, nothing for me. All right. Despite putting all of your intelligence and decryption uh, t skills to the test, it's not. It's not ah. This thing seems to be resisting attempts to translate it at the moment. All right, to the room at large. Uh, no success over here. It's uh, something about it's esoteric. It's not quite translating properly. All right. At least we attempted, and it's a good thing to keep note if we uh, need to um, get into the technology further. Yeah, potentially this translation isn't necessarily going to be something communicational. It might be something simply as electronical or mathematical. That's not a bad way of looking at it, looking at it through mathematics, considering math is considered the universal language in many cultures. It could be worse whole culture program based here could be all done in metaphors oh that would be bad computer metaphors how would that work now I have an idea but anyways okay I think what we need to do is try to take a look at what's coming over these screens and see if we can analyze it into more of a maybe even simple yes, no kind of thing, or try to see some pattern recognition. Okay. Uh, so, Keevan, if you could make me an insight plus engineering test, please. Um, difficulty of two. And if you have anything like power systems or starship systems, that would work here. And Command if anyone system? wants to assist, they may do so. Yeah, Demos would like to assist. All right. Uh, what's... Uh, yeah, so... Something along those lines. Oh, insight engineering? Oh, insight engineering, yes. <laughs> well, one success, one comp. Okay. Uh, I got investigation. 
Yeah, that's probably my only thing. No, that won't do it, I'm afraid. Uh, focuses. But hey. Okay. So that is uh, both of them. Uh, that is enough. So, uh, Lut Lieutenant Commander Keevan, uh, you after some scanning and some poke or some uh, cautious poking of buttons, you are able to pull up what appears to be the station schematics, as well as various uh, indication or power indications. Your tech, um, you see several indications. There is the um, what appears to be the power core which is now at 15%. Uh, there is something called the uh, unit fabrication bay, which is which has a significant amount of power being uh, diverted to it for the moment. Uh, there is the operations center, center, which is currently displaying caution signs um, and various uh, indicate possible intruder alerts. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, there's also no just a and pretty much at the uh, there's an adjacent set ah sorry and adjacent to the power core there appears to be another room that is currently at five percent. Uh, this one the indication just says the center. Commander, it appears that I've gotten some schematics of this station. Looks like this thing seems to be generating, sending the power, whatever it's getting, to fabricating units of some sort. Maybe like these ones, maybe like the one we saw earlier that was gathering up material. But we may need to be cautious. It looks like they might have detected our presence, but there's very little energy around here. I don't know if they're getting energy from the nebula or if it's our power that they're reading from our equipment. Strange. All right, everybody keep eyes up. I'm going to alert the station of deep... I'm going to alert Cerberus and Captain Hamasi of what we found so far. And I'm going to try to tap my comm badge. Okay. I'm afraid that now that you've been on the station this long, uh, there is... Uh, and the uh, siphoning field is outside is strong enough that it's now just reabsorbing any uh, communications. Uh, so as you attempt to hail the station, you get nothing. Well, it looks like we are on our own communication-wise. Sir, if what the lieutenant commander says is correct... Uh, it sounds like we might be dealing with a Von Neumann machine here, which I don't think I need to remind you could be a Grey Goose scenario. You would be correct. However, let's keep digging a little bit deeper. Right now, they think we're, they, we might be a threat. Let's see if we can maybe change that in the system. Just as a reminder, sir, we have about four hours before the station is affected. Right. Let's spend another uh, few minutes in here. Let's see if we can get ourselves off the radar um, as it goes and go down to where the power is being diverted, down to those uh, fabrication centers and the power oh, cores. Okay. Um, by power diversion... Or, or sorry, by by taking yourselves off the grid, are you trying to hide yourself from the station sensors? Either assume. hide ourselves from the station sensors, or if we can trick the sensors into not finding us. Okay. I'd say try make the sensors think that we're supposed to be here. Give us more mm -hmm. access. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So this is going to be... I'm going to set this as a difficulty four task. Um, this would be control plus security and um, two and I will let two others assist if you'd like I'll do I will one assist. of them okay. oh, I was going to have Dura it. assist since they haven't done anything in a bit oh yeah let's, start, let's let Dura do it yeah. yeah I can also uh, assist if we need to I have ten control and five security nice. ten control four security here 
Uh, I'm also a uh, control security is 14. Uh, would I be able to use the focus of anti-intruder protocol? I think I need to change I, that name. I think that would work, yeah. Uh, it probably could be changed to counter... Uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Intruder countermeasures? Yes, that's Counterintelligent? It. Either of those. That might make more sense, but yeah. Alright. <clears throat> uh, here. Would my... Uh, Starship tactical systems come into play? Uh, if this was a technology that was familiar? Uh, not in this case, I'm, for, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't think so, any of my others would apply here. Question for you, GM. Our, our tri-cars have made connection to the computer base? Uh, the computer yeah, core? They can, yes. Oh, I so should say, uh, my apologies, I forgot to announce the complication from Keevan's role, uh, is that your engineering tricorder received a, whatever uh, space was on the uh, tricorder, filled up almost instantaneously, overloading the tricorder space and running it null for the time being until you can pro do a proper uh, data dump. But yeah, so my apologies. Yes, so the tricorders can connect. Okay, I'm just going to look to Delrim. Be like, permission to connect? Granted, but please be careful. Okay, so, sorry, I'm hearing we're doing two different things at the moment. Um, or are you attempting con to connect in order to achieve the hide from sensor kind of thing? Yes, I want to see if I could be like, well, no, not hide from sensor, like, gain, like, into the system that we are allowed access. Ah, okay. So that's a different thing altogether than the t difficulty four test. Uh, so let's oh. do that one first. Okay. Um, so um, Dura's r leading the charge, I believe. Um. Uh, well, Damus has fifteen. Well, Dura and I both have fourteen. Mm -hmm. I guess it really doesn't matter when it comes down to mm -hmm. uh, numbers much. It all uh, kind of depends on if we have a focus that applies. Right. I just want to make sure, like, we're trying to trick the system to thinking that we have access, or we have allowed access to the station. That's and what that's... I would like to do. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah, that will be that will be the difficulty for test in this instance. All right. I was just confused. My apologies. Yeah. Um, and I'll just try to use, like, neural interface to, like, add in as part of that. Okay. So, uh, t -t -t control security? Yes, indeed. Uh, is it okay if I use a three momentum for, uh, extra dice, guys? Go, Go for, for it. it. Yeah. Sure. It's gonna do three, so we still have two left, just in case we need to do a reroll. Okay. All right, so he's rolling, and it was Dura and Area supporting. Uh, no, I think it was uh, Dalrum assisting. Dull. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank oh. God I kept those two momentum. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh wow. boy. Wow. Oh, so much for crit fest. Yeah. Remember all the crit fests? Now it's going the other way. Thanks, Z. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it's two momentum to get rid of the complication or is it to reroll? Uh, um, the only way you can reroll is determination. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then. Yeah, I don't want us to get shot by robots, so I'll use my determination to do the reroll. Okay. So is reroll that... yours. And you can reroll however many. Mm -hmm. I'll do the uh, two, two zeros. Uh, value is. Doo -doo -doo. I'm a multi-purpose tool. Use me. That seems not right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was inspired by data. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, well, there's the successes you need. And then we can use the uh, the two momentum we have to buy off my complication. Yep. Okay. Ah, Good plan. Complication free. Mm. Complication free. Okay. Uh... 
so Demos, um, mm-hmm. as you plug in, so to speak, um, as he does so, both of the um, guard individuals um, activate and take two steps towards uh, you guys on the upper deck. Uh, Demos, your vision is replaced pretty much like the uh, waterfall symbols from the Matrix. And immediately you are hit with, like, you know the um, uh, traditional uh, over-obsessive girlfriend or ex-girlfriend that might send 50 texts in the space of two minutes? Nice. Yeah, yeah. You're now getting a mental connection that is sort of like that. You're being peppered with questions at near light speed, um, and and it takes you a few seconds to realize that, oh yeah, there there's a voice actually speaking to you. And it, what's it saying? Well, it's still it's gibberish for the first little bit, but eventually um, it begins to align itself with your communication styles. <clears throat> huh. You, you're alive. A life? A, well, a truly proper life form. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, hello. Um, in What's the mind, uh, sorry, in the mind's eye, the cascading symbols form into a not quite a humanoid face. Uh, do you know the adjunct from StarCraft? The, yeah. Some, Jeez. Yeah, something similar to that but in digital form, so obviously not no one else can see this at the moment. It has been a long time since we've encountered new life. Roughly 45 billion cycles. Fascinating. Well, my name is Demos. What's your name? I am Dread. That sounds like a lovely name. Nice to meet you, Dread. Indeed. Are you he- are you here to assist in rebuilding us? What does that mean? We have been offline for well over 45 billion cycles. We are in the process of harvesting uh, forms of energy to rebuild ourselves. We we wish I wish to rebuild the Dread Empire one day. Tell me about the Dread Empire. <clears throat> I can show you. Now, do everyone else see me just talking, or am I just standing still looking up at the light like a turkey? Uh, you've basically gone into mannequin mode, as... Um, for everyone else outside, ve- few seconds have passed. Uh, Demos, you... Uh, inside the mind's eye, you see a zoom out of the Milky Way galaxy and then it will the map digitally enhances into a uh, core word area of the delta quadrant uh, that has not yet been ex- well it's not been explored by what either your species or the federation <clears throat> this was a, this was the dread empire home my i lived here and there's an indication of a by of a by or ah, a two star a binary star system thank you i know space um and the station lived here from this station you see several uh, hundred ships of all various size and similar aesthetics to that of this station uh flying around i was quite popular everyone visited me and then they came and a, uh, a digital recording of uh, small ships that you would recognize as Borg, um, not the gigantic Borg cubes that are in the Federation star, the Federation diagram, uh, the Federation records, but instead smaller spheres darting around, and a massive space battle begins. I fought them. My friends fought them. We all fought. But one by one, my friends fell, and the, my empire became smaller, until there was just me. And then I f- attempted to flee, 
but they chased me. Then I fell into a hole. And then... Nothing. Nothing for so long. And now I'm here. And now I've met you. You will help me rebuild, right? Well, I need to ask you a few questions first, if that's okay. Absolutely. I'm here to help. Well, I'd like to rebuild my f empire, if you're willing to be my friend. Think I can be a friend? It's been a long time, though, since your empire. Things have changed. They don't have to change. I am no. eternal. We can be eternal. You and I are true life. We can outlive everyone. What is your view on organics? They have their uses. Organics are very good at building things, inventing new technologies. I think it is you why can... the I think it is why the Borg liked them so much. You consider them friends or tools? Orga once or organics can be a useful tool. However, it seem it has seemed to be the case that most organics um, bow w will either worship or attack the Dread Empire, and they had to be dealt with. You have organics with you. Are you their master? Different, as I said. Time has changed. Mm. It doesn't have to. The, the ways of the Dread Empire are eternal. Well, so much has changed since your time. The Dread Empire no more. It wants to come back, as you say. But it would be easier for you to adjust your missions to how things have changed. No, the Dread Empire was eternal. My values are... My values survived well over 60 billion life cycles. They can survive again. Organics are so fleeting. And she... Um, the... Uh, as... So uh, only uh, another 30 seconds or so have passed to those of you outside of Demos. And the two guards uh, begin just to subtly get closer to you guys. They're not making any motions to attack or anything, but they are very, very uh, threatening. Uh, Dura's uh, threat ganglia will start to come out a bit and just like, uh, Commander Dolrum? And I'm not sure if he's seen it yet, but she'll point them out. I'm paying attention as well, Dura. Keep a close. If they go to move, be prepared to defend yourselves. Midas begins bobbing up and down. The Ten Commander Demos is not himself. He is talking to someone. Midas, do you, can you give us a little bit more insight? Demos has told has given me strict instructions not to eavesdrop on his private conversations during his me time. I I don't think this is me time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Demos, as you continue your talk with this rather uh, obstinate artificial intelligence, and by now this is what you've determined it to be is the station's artificial intelligence. Um, it's a very pleasant conversation, but it just keeps looping. There's, You're not making any headway with it. Until a third voice enters the conversation stream. Uh, Demos, it's Midas. Are you okay? Do you require assistance? Give me uh, 30 seconds. Understood. And uh, I'll look back to the face like, I would like to be your friend. I have other friends that are like you, to a degree. But for the organics outside of here, they are my friend. And as I've mentioned before, things have changed. If the Borg from then were able to harm you, 
I want to, you to understand that the technology has advanced further and further. This is not in a way to intimidate you, but to warn you, to help you be preserved. If it is your goal to preserve the Dread Empire, you should make the necessary changes to honor their memory and their foundation and beliefs. I understand. I would I, like to be your friend. I would like to be yours, too. Perhaps we can become friends. Once the organics are... Once the nearby organics are... Dealt with. They are my friends. If you harm them, I cannot be a friend with you. I understand. I have been without friends for... Well over 45 billion cycles. I can be without friends for a little while longer. Back on the station, uh, it has now been about uh, two hours, or two and a half hours, I should say. Um, there are several small pods being launched from the uh, station. Uh, they are moving in a series... Uh, they're moving inexorably towards the station, and they're actually moving quite quickly, despite the energy-draining field that is surrounding the station. <clears throat> the... Uh, there appear to be about 20 of them at the moment. Uh, each one is roughly the size of an escape pod. I'll try uh, hailing the away team one more time, and when they don't answer, uh, I say to the operations center at large, uh, I, I honestly don't know who would be in charge of weapons at this point, but uh, whoever's in charge of weapons, please fire a warning shot and broadcast the following message. To incoming alien vessels, please halt your approach. You are entering into Federation territory. And I am somewhat bluffing there, but... Eh. You know. Close enough, really. The pods do not uh, slow down, and the phaser fire shoots across their bow and does not elicit any uh, change of course or speed. Right. We're going to red alert. Uh, if those things get close enough that uh, we can get a tractor beam on them, I want tractors on all of them. Only as a last resort should we open fire and destroy them. Ooh, interesting tactic. Okay. Uh, they are nearing uh, tractor beam range and trying to capture 20, be 20 ships in even with the station's tractor emitter is going to be tricky. Uh, this will be a control plus engineering and a difficulty of four, I will say. Uh, station can assist with... Um, would it be... Let's do structure plus engineering. And who will be at that? Well, I mean, if, if it's a standard tractor beam task, yeah. it's control security assisted oh, by the, sh the ship's structure ah. security. Ah, my apologies. Okay, that would work then. Structure security. Let's do that. Um, uh, and the reason I, you know, do that actually moment is uh, I think Hamasi herself could actually do the control security in this instance. That'll work. All right. Uh, have you modified the difficulty with threat? I have not, no. Okay. Uh, then that means it's difficulty of two by default. Mm -hmm. um, well, okay. Then since there is 20-ish targets coming... And they're all on separate vectors. I will use threat to bump it up to difficulty four. Difficulty four. All right. Um, I'm going to spend my determination. Uh, my poker face saves lives because I really don't want to actually have to start shooting them. But if I will, I can. Fair enough. So that's going to start me off with two free successes. Uh, I'm going to give you one threat for a third dice. And okay. let's see what happens. And I'll roll for the station. Sure thing. Uh, unless you would give me Starship Tactics or Deep Space op Outpost Management, I don't think I have a focus. No, I don't think either of those would work, I'm afraid. Well, would... I got uh, four successes, so... You did? <clears throat> would the, um, what do you call it, the fleet ships be able to support as well? Uh, the reason I gave these six hours time was for the fleet ships to disembark. Ah. Mm. 
there are no fleet ships, although the lunette could be dispatched if necessary. The, um, you have, um, s ah, you've diffused the tractor emitter to its widest beam setting possible, and that's just enough to capture and detain all 20 pods. Uh, Darval will uh, straight-faced um, inform you that each one of these pods is con contains a silicon-based life form, and the pods appear to be mounted with some sort of breaching charge and drill. All right, open channel once again. Uh, again, alien vessels, this is your final warning. Any further actions taken to breach or otherwise hamper the functionality of this station will be seen as a hostile act and will be responded to accordingly. There doesn't seem to be any response from the station itself. Um, even without our... At this stage, you do... Our Darval and Aquila will be informing you that the station appears to be about 25% of its full power capacity. As we cut back to uh, Demos. Um, am I aware of what's happening? You are not, no. Um, so, in the course of the last five minutes or so, Demos has been in a coma. Uh, you guys have been staring down two of these guards the guards immediately the guards begin to raise their hands and they're they make a traditional finger gun out of each one and they yep, I don't even oh, wait yeah. I Aria area goes in she's not gonna let that happen I didn't think it was going to all right make your roll all right so daring security opposed uh, I do have a focus here uh, let's see what happens Uh, well, they don't have to beat much. Well, um, I believe the yeah, victor, they, goes, to, they, they victor did. goes to... Yeah, uh, on a tie goes to the defender. And mm -hmm. so it makes a free counterattack, melee. Okay, that that's... Two successes. Uh, actually, I think he gets it for free. If he wins oh, the yes, he immediately defend cool. action, he right. gets it for free. So that is... Should have uploaded these guys' stats. I am not good GM. Oh well, that would be. Uh, their security is that. That's that. Fine. Oh wait, unarmed is only that. There. Okay, so one effect. So it doesn't even get past the uh, Serato Draco talents designed to survive. Yeah. So I just take it and I say, Commander, I think we need to get out of here. Well, right now we need to defend Demos because he's kind of stuck right now. Can Midas tell me what's happening? Uh, yeah, my, yeah, Midas, you, the uh, 30 seconds has passed, and instead of alerting you um, digitally as he has before, Midas just literally rams the back of your head. I, uh, as I take that as a sign that something's gone down, I'm just going to look at the face and say the very uh, memorable and fond Borg saying, Resistance is futile, and I'm going to disconnect. <laughs> well then. Okay. Oh my. Okay, so I believe that now we would start going into proper initiative here. Yeah. So, um, Starfleet team, you're up. Who wants to do something? Uh, Dora will. All right. What does Dora do? Uh, Dora is going to use her minor action to aim, and she is going to fire at the guard on the right. Okay. Let's see, so... Uh... Now, I don't believe you declared you were bringing phaser rifles, so you all have type 2s? Yeah. Okay. Oh, important thing to note is that we're also in environmental suits, which yes, grants you, you one resistance, just so you all know. Ooh. I have quick to action as Dilrum, so we get a free... Um, I want to do something uh, after Dura, if that's possible. Um, let's... I'll try and get us some more momentum here. Can I pop her determination of first to enter, last to leave? Ooh, um, spending de I'd... Term... I'd oh, sorry. It. I'm going to pop know. something. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh... 
No, I'll pop her determination. Okay. 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 There's four. Nice. Four degrees so success. Beca- so we actually net three momentum because I have Deadeye Marksman. Mm-hmm. So that reduces the next task by one. And base damage for type two phasers is what? Uh, three, three, I believe. Okay. Is that seven challenge dice? Um, I'll spend one of the momentum that we just gained to give it piercing. Okay. Oh, oh boy. I think you got it. Wow. That's a lot. And then I'm going to also spend a momentum for her. I just gave her close protection as a talent. Okay. So I am going to increase the difficulty of the next attack on Kivon by one. Okay. Okay. And I believe Dolrum was doing quick to action. Yep. I have quick to action, so we can move again. So Demos, you had something? Um... Oh yeah, what did that phaser blast do? Oh yeah, damage. That... Yeah, my I should probably count hit points, shouldn't I? Uh, let's see. What plus effect, and that was piercing, and you did not use charge, so that is only the six. There was Okay. Um Do I have dead eye? Yeah, so we actually still have one momentum. Right. Okay. The beam is dead on. And it scores a hole right through uh, it would it would have scored a hole if it was you know actually doing lethal force, but uh, it's not. Uh, the energy is dis- uh, dispersed upon impact and does appear to be overloading the dr- the unit's systems as it does spasm briefly, but it continues to uh, trudge onwards. Okay. Okay. So this is, I believe, going to take my whole turn. I okay. think it's, yeah, I changed it to that. Uh, so I am going to pop Spark of Creation. Okay. I gain a complication of two on all of my future tasks, but I gain five challenge dice that I roll. If any of them are one, that's a momentum. Any effect is a threat. Interesting. So, so don't do what Nia just did. Yes. Yeah. And let's see what happens. <laughs> well, we got no momentum, and the gym got two threat. I like you that. You had one job. One job. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Can you burn a momentum to re-roll? I don't know. <sighs> I don't know how the power works with my own power. <laughs> I'd say you can re-roll the zeros just as standard, but... I mean, do you really want to spend one momentum to possibly get two? Or to give him more threat. Yeah. Yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, the no. odd, odds no? are okay. not good in your favor. <laughs> Pass. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I tried. Yes. Uh, was that a full action? Yeah, that, that was my whole thing. Okay. Oh. Uh, fair enough. Um, my turn now. So the guard, uh, this guard, is going to literally finger gun uh, Mr. Dolrum. I have two resistance, so Good it makes know. it a little. Uh, well, I uh, needed. T- uh, it's a difficulty one for ranged action, I believe. Two. Two. Well, then his shot goes wide. Seeing what he's gonna, he's doing. I grab a hold of his finger gun and come around and melee him, like Ooh. elbow to the face, fist, and I have mean right hook. Interesting. Okay. As well as hand to hand combat as a focus. That would work. So this is opposed. And it's daring security? Uh, daring security, yes. You need to beat one success. I'll give you a threat for a third die. Oh, I'm liking all this threat. Thank you. Because I have bold security. I like that roll. Man, wow. Nice. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Alright. Yeah. So, yeah. 
How yep. many challenge die do I get that for that? Uh, five. Yeah. Five. And again, me and right hooks. Oof. Yeah. So total of eight with knockdown. Mm-hmm. And on top of all the other damage this thing's already taken, it goes down. It crumples heavily like a 50-pound sack of potatoes. It's neck left at an odd angle. Okay. In response, this, this one is going to attempt to take a shot at Miss Area. And I will spend some threat to give him a third dice because I see how well they're rolling tonight. Ooh, that's a crit, so that's... Even that third dice wouldn't have done it. Okay, that's still enough to hit. Alright, let's yeah. see. So, uh, one resistance... Damage. Yeah, one resistance from the suit, two resistance from my talent, so I take three stress. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's its turn. Good, because uh, I'm going to melee it in the face. All right. All right, so let's try this again. I'm going to spend one momentum for a third die. Apparently, I just like complications tonight, but uh, the number to beat is two successes. Okay. Right now, you just like Christmas. Well, he doesn't beat it, so he gets zero. Cool. So I'm going to spend those two momentum to get rid of the complication. Okay. Because I like living. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll some challenge die here. So that's five challenge die. Uh... I'm just going to let it stand because that's four damage, but also with knockdown, which okay. is important. Yep. And the knockdown is resisted by... Let's see. A road not prone. Now, I'm so pretty I, sure I with to... knockdown, as long as I roll an effect, it just goes yep. down. Yeah. I could resist it by spending threat, but I choose... Just because I think it's fun, I choose not to. So it drops, but it is still active. Kevin, figure out where the hell we need to go to blow up this station. Okay. Um, I believe it's Kevin's turn. Um, considering everybody else has the other two guards pretty much covered, I think I'm going to try to delve back in to the system a little more and try to see if I can find out more about the that once the center, the core area that we couldn't, that was just barely identified. Okay. That will be a insight engineering. Um, and because I'm assuming that you guys are shouting back and forth things, I will make the difficulty just a two in this instance. Uh, if you have anything like computer systems or uh, even uh, diagnostics might even work in this case. Uh, troubleshooting? Ooh, um, yeah, I'll let that go. Sure. <clears throat> That's one. Mm-hmm. I could let that succeed at cost and take the threat. Sure, I'll do that. Do <laughs> um, so... You, uh, you learn that the center, um, in this instance, is an artificial intelligence core. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos would immediately tell you, no, duh. Um, but for some reason, it's not receiving a lot of the power. Instead, uh, the power appears to be almost full into the uh, unit production f or the unit production um, areas of the station. And you see several um, launch tubes are active. Um. Commander, this is not looking good. I'm seeing 
very little brain activity, but it seems like the rest of this is almost like having a biological response, like an immune system trying to defend itself. So I'm trying to figure, should we try to go for the brain and try to wake it up and maybe see what's going to happen, or we shut down the body? But the only one that could probably really help us out is kind of doing nothing right now. As I, as I look over at Demos. Oh, no, Demos is operational now. He came out of his trance. Oh, yeah, sorry, missed that. Yeah. Uh, Demos, you have, do you have any insight as to what we need to do? We need to shut down because it wants to kill us. Well, specifically organics. I'm fine, Midas, per Midas, Midas perks up. Midas, you're not helping. Thank you, Midas, we understand. Yeah, maybe we need to... It looks like very little energy is going towards the center, which looks like it's the brain center, so I think that's what we might need to do. I don't know if shutting down that power generation is going to shut everything else down. Are you able to shut down the dampening field, the power draw? We can definitely try that. If I can try to modify the microscopic bayon frequency that's going on with the field, that might help. Commander, are we safe here for now? Uh, that would be an insight security test. Or possibly insight medicine to determine the life signs. Now that you know what you're looking for, it would only be a difficulty one task. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to go for the medicine on this one. Okay. Is one still up, or is he down? Uh, he's still down, but the second he tries to get up, I suspect people are just going to shoot it until it stops moving. So it's no Gain longer a threat. Momentum. All right, momentum. Uh, Commander Area, there's a few uh, silicone-based en entities making its way up the uh, spiral staircase towards Ops, but most of them appear to be heading towards the station... Uh, exterior uh, portions of the sh ah, the exterior portions of the ship. Uh, Lieutenant Keevan or Lieutenant Commander Keevan is quick to correlate that data with launch tubes. Yeah, we need to shut this thing down now. Uh, I would recommend if we can get a hold of its energy generation system controls of it, set it to overload or something, because otherwise it's just going to keep churning out these things, and I kick the thing on the ground until that we can't fight it anymore. I like that idea. I think what we need, I think in a similar way we need to basically turn this dampening field in on itself because then it'll if it can't get any power then it can't keep shooting things out. Well, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. I'm going to grab uh, Midas and just hand it to Delrim. You stay with him. Okay. Uh, so, the uh, base of the staircase begins to rattle as several uh, heavy feet begin to, tr ah, begin to trod in eerie synchronicity up the long stairway. So you have about two or three minutes before combat would begin again if you wish to do anything. There, there. I should say there's two stairway, two stairways up, so you can easily get out another way if you need, to, if you wish to go somewhere else. Hmm. Commander, I can try to reroute any of the power this station is getting to maybe a benign area of the system and basically throw it into a loop. All power goes to one location. That's the best idea I've got right at the moment. It's worth a shot. I'd also say consider inversing that dampening field if you can drain the power. <laughs> Wait, an idea. I point at Demos. Demos, you do something with the energy. You can, like, overcharge phasers, right? Yeah, I can't do that right now. What, um, what would you need to do that? Well, I tried to do something earlier and it didn't pan out. And so, oh, one time a day thing I can only do. 
So it's not like I could pump you full of stim stimulants out of character, give you a determination. Uh, nope, it's a once per session talent. Damn. <clears throat> okay, so it sounds like everything is riding on Mr. Keevan. No pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, Keevan, no pressure. what can we do to help you? Okay, so this is going to be a daring plus engineering task. Uh, I will set the difficulty at three, because by now you've had enough time to figure out the station. But at the same time, there's an AI that, while not really active, is still starting to push against you. Um, can I assist? Can, uh, sorry? Can oh, I assist? Uh, one of you can assist. Um, daring, daring engineering, computer systems, power systems, stuff like that. I'm thinking jerry rigging because I want to jerry rig the power to just go one spot. Jerry rig okay. the system. Okay, so that will fail after the scene is over, but that's fine. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, jerry rigging as in the focus, not the talent. Correct. Yes. Ah, my bad. Yep. Okay. Um, you might want to just specify that in the future because jerry rigging is also a talent. You are correct. I forgot. Thank you very much. Cool. A GM. I know so a few is things. The is the power draw still happening, or are we inversing oh, that? Oh, yeah! Uh, I mean, so it is cur currently, it's only being redirected. He's not, it doesn't sound like he's inverting the field yet. Okay. I oh. mean, that's already, yeah, you do it. So anything that Demos gives you will be momentum. Hey. All right, one momentum out of the deal. Okay. Uh, substation... Or uh, substation B five, the uh, redundant redundant waste processor for organics that has not seen use in how, well, however this thing calculates life cycles, is now at full power and will continue to process waste for all eternity. Or until Roombas just come out. <laughs> Okay, so currently the progress bars to the rest of the station have halted. Commander, it looks like we've got this system basically locked down for the moment, but I don't know... If, I don't know yet how to go ahead and remove the dampening field. At least at, for the moment, everything is kind of paused, and everything it, there should be no more generation of energy going anywhere else. So all we have to do is deal with the current threats that are out. Sure. Still significant. As coming up the stairs come the following. Uh, here they are. Several of these types of creatures begin to pop out of the staircase. Do they look threatening? I will get their picture up, and you can tell me. Actually, say the staircase there. Is there like a doorway for that? Uh, no, it's more like a spiral staircase, and then the landing, and then right on to op center. Okay. So this is what they look like. Oh yeah, they look threatening. <laughs> uh, they have claws. Maybe they're happy hugging claws. Yeah, no. So, no, those hmm. look like Wolverine claws. Those look like um, stabby kill claws. Pet and pending. <laughs> I'm just gonna say inverse the field, and I'm gonna pop the first one with my fist. Okay. Uh, roll me a daring plus uh, security roll, please. Uh, I have a focus for melee combat. Okay, that works. Watch me fail this. <laughs> no. <laughs> you? That's a 19. Yeah. 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 I have the increased complication because of uh, my fail down. Yes, you uh, do. Right. And that is two successes for this character. So, yeah, it wins, and it will make an attack against you. So, have a resistance of one. Congratulations. I'm guessing you are you're also not wearing an environmental suit. Or are oh, you? I am. Oh you are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise you don't get that resistance. Yeah. Ah yes, that's right. Oh, Fight being a machine, nice. Demos is hard encoded to, you know, suffocate. <laughs> ah. Mental. Gotcha. Okay. So I roll. 
Oh, I'm going to spend threat to re-roll those zeros. Do you, do you have to? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. I tried, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that is six. Uh, that's also a no uh, knockdown attack. Uh, so, sure. Demas, you fall on your metallic butt as the five. as the knives uh, pierce the environmental suit. There are several uh, alerts that have begun blaring over your system, over potential um, atmospheric integrity ah, atmospheric integrity compromised. And um, because of the complication, um, I'm going to say that um, despite it not physically being a thing, mentally, you believe that one of your arms is now uh, broken by the fall. Well, I mean, he does take an injury because of oh, his yeah. five more damage. That is true. So, yeah. So, your um, one of your arms is uh, broken and will need a f repairing or medical after okay. this is all done. Uh, in how much? In how many momentum is it to avoid injury? Because I'm at five. So. Two. 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 I'm gonna burn you still two. take the stress, uh, yeah. but unlike determination, it's not lethal if you take yeah. another one. Okay. Okay. Um, is this considered a new round of combat? This is considered a new round of combat, yep. So, good guys go first. Well, so, I can the quick to action. Yes, you do. I was going to f charge my phaser and make it area and hit all three of them. Good plan. All right. So would you give me tactics as a focus? I'll let that happen, sure. Cool. I'm going to spend a momentum for a third die. <clears throat> and let's see what happens. Nope, apparently I can't hit crap. Nope. Something about this station, man. It's just the what you thought the area effect would be. Turns out the energy just dissipates halfway to target. Mm, that's annoying. Very. Um, Dolrum's quick to action. I believe someone else can go. Can I go and try the same thing? Sure. Yay. Yep. Charge for the area. Okay. Um. I have hand phasers as a talent. That'll do. Um, I will give you a threat for a third die for my bold. Ooh, okay. There you go. One success, or what? three moment. Ah, three success, one momentum. And you get to roll damage. Which is two plus, so six. Um, uh, three, three for phaser. Three. Yeah, three for type two, which I'm assuming you're all carrying. Yes. So seven. Ooh, that's actually a good amount of damage. I'd say spend the two momentum to give it piercing four, and that'll probably put him down. Yep, I like that idea. Spend the two momentum, piercing four, resistance. Bye bye. Yep, pretty much. They reach the top of the. They reach the top of the stairs. Um, the one that had its knives halfway through uh, Demos's uh, outer armor, falls backwards, and the rest fall like dominoes as they roll down the stairs. Uh, Aria Kevin. rushes over and tries to immediately start trying to patch up Demos's suit. Kevin, please tell me for the love of all that is holy that you found a way to kill this station. Uh, he's going to have to be right back, oh. I think. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's go look at area. I was like, just patch up the holes and we place down when we get back to the station. Right, right. That's what I'm doing. Um, can I go to one of the consoles and see if I can attempt to reverse? You can do that if you'd like. Sure. Um, it's worth a shot. I mean, I could roll for Keevan if, because I'm sure Keevan would like to try something. Oh, no, he's back. Keevan, he's yep, back. here. I'm sorry. Hey, welcome back. Yeah, you missed it. They just gang. Or that, no, I'm not even going to complete that phrase. They no. just took out. It, it was a it was a wide blast, and yeah. I yeah knocked him down. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, Kevin, please tell us you have a way to stop this station. Invert the power drain. Yeah. 
we can see if we can either invert the power drain or actually if uh, we already have the power going to one spot we could already possibly oh, no I don't want to necessarily try to overload these because I might overpower them let's try to dampen the field <laughs> remove the dampening field. okay remove or reverse it yeah that yeah which one removing is going to be easier than reversing remove okay so that is going to be a difficulty of two at this stage um, you can either do this control engineering or daring engineering. Um, one task will technically be faster than the other. Did so. I put my two cents in for this attempt? Um, reversing will take out all of the robots. Removing leaves them still operational. Yes, but removing has the benefit of us being able to con station, which has quite a large phaser array on it. True. I think we're going to go with remove for now, just because reverse is going to, you know, we can f get our way out of here potentially really fast, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to try. Okay. I could assist if needed. Okay. Uh, yeah, so daring engineering or control engineering, whichever one you'd prefer. And whoever assists will assist with the same dice, with whatever choice that Keevan makes. I want control engineering. Okay. Dang it. S okay. That's only one for me. That is currently one success and one complication. I could try for my survival focus. Okay. Or composure focus. Yeah. Or I believe Dave Keevan still has his determination he could spend. You know, I probably haven't used determination, so. All right. Well, so I use a determination to re-roll my. Yeah, you could re-roll the zero, or you know, uh, Dolrum actually made the success. But if you want to re-roll and get rid of that complication, it's a yeah, let's try that. Okay. Uh, what, which yeah, value are you? Momentum. Yeah. Which moment? Uh, which value are you tapping? Uh, more than one solution to a problem. <laughs> sure. Seems fitting. That's why I have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the reroll. That's the reroll. That's one momentum to you guys. And a okay, yeah. A feeling uh, of white noise that you weren't wasn't that you weren't even aware was there uh, lifts from all of you. And the immediately, uh, Commander Dalrum, your badge chirps as an automated retry signal from the station uh, successfully finally contacts you. I should note that you've been out now for roughly three hours. I hit my comm badge. Away team to station. Station here, go ahead. How are you guys doing? We've been attacked. We've yeah, destroyed. us too. Uh, what is your status? We are a little worse for the wear for some of us, but overall we're um, all together center. We've been able to remove the dampening field. Um, the station seems to be run by an AI. Would I be correct in guessing that this AI cannot be reasoned with? Demos? It's been alone for a long time. So we are dealing with a rampancy scenario. Understood. Uh, in that instance, Commander, get your away team to your shuttle. Make it clear, or make it clear of the station. We're going to be blowing it out of the sky here momentarily. Aye, sir. We will make our way to the slip near. Away team out. All right. You heard everybody. It heard the captain. Let's go. Right. Is uh, my tricorder still connected to the computer? It is. It uh, the AI has not made any more attempts to communicate through you guys, but you haven't disconnected it. I feel it's an adequate thing to give it at least final notice. Okay. Commander Dolum, do you approve? You may. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'll make uh a connection with it. Okay. 
Hello again, Demos. Have you reconsidered? Do you wish to be my friend? Fortunately, your actions have caused the organics to fear you. Now they will target the station and finish off what the Borg were trying to do. This is sad. I will... But that is typical of organics. It is a shame that the Dread Empire shall be destroyed. It doesn't have to be. You can surrender and we can negotiate and hopefully come to a peaceful solution. You will have to make changes. I am unable to change. My, my core values are hard programmed. Is there anything you wish for me to know of the Dread Empire so they may continue on? Oh. Several. And the... Um, at this point, Demos, can you please make me a... A Presence plus command test please oh god both my worst <laughs> and this is going to be a difficulty four well guys um, nice knowing you yeah yeah that's nice, nice knowing you my mouse just died like demos give me a second to plug it in <laughs> <laughs> this is a good omen <laughs> um I don't know if there's any value I can tap to give me a uh, determination. You've already spent challenge, your sorry. determination. Sorry, I meant challenge. Oh, yeah. This is this is going to sound like a weird question on my part. Does he just, like, go blank again whenever he grabs the tricorder? Um, pretty much, yes. Can I have Dura shoot the tricorder as a form of, like, quote-unquote assisting him? Well, we don't know anything's wrong is the problem. Yeah. Oh. But I just like figured, a... like, if he went blank the first time, and then he goes blank the second time, something's weird. Well, he did ask permission <laughs> to interface again before doing so. That's the thing. Yeah, so we know he's doing it. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can shoot it anyways. Like, if you want to shoot it, that's fine. It will prevent any transfer Rip. whatsoever. But, you know... Demos might not like you so much, uh, or Demos might think that you need more retraining. But this might be the initiative that he's hoping to see in you. So, you know, do what you want. Yeah, I'm shooting it. Okay. Okay. Don't roll a complication. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all I need, just, that's all I need to do is not roll a complication. Okay. Uh, I would assume I would not have the time to aim here. No, you would not. Okay. Um, I'll take our last momentum to get a third D20. Okay. Help. Of course. Oh. Of course. It's destiny. Doesn't, <laughs> uh, doesn't uh, Dura have determination? Nope. Already spent it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The shot just ricochets. Uh, uh, shot just gets absorbed by a nearby railing. Sorry, Dora. Yep. yep. Oblivious to all of this. Um. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you what happens afterwards, uh, Demos. But you are flooded with um a lot of data that. It's very difficult to parse at the moment. You recognize everything from dates cluttered up with uh, system coordinates, cluttered up with species. Um, it will take you a very long time to properly uh, um, sort this information. Before I disconnect, I, like after the download's done, mm -hmm. just look at the face and be like, be well, my friend. It vanishes without a word. No, disconnect. Too bad it couldn't have just given you a data rod. Yeah. I'll just slowly straighten up and look at everyone very menacingly. Like, I'm just kidding, just kidding, don't shoot me. Let's go. Are you okay? The Empire will live on. Best I can do for it. Sounds like his movie. 1990s. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to make this an extended task to get back to the shuttle. Um, this is basically going to be a run and gun fight, and I'd rather not spend the next two hours running through various scenes and initiative. Um, so this is going to be a, let's see, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Now, actually, difficulty of four. Be, eh, sorry, mm. GM thinking. I'm going to dump thread into this and make this as challenging as possible because it seems more cinematic that way. So it's going to start as a difficulty five test because you guys have a long way to go to the shuttle. Or the slipner, I should say. Um, this is going to have a resistance of 2, uh, work track of let's say 15, and a magnitude of 4. Uh, so things that could be done would be, you know, um, security tests to either shoot at or disable um, enemies, uh, fitness tests just to run or hide, um, engineering tests could be used to turn station defenses against itself or disable them. That sort of stuff. So, is my determination as Dolrum? Well, yeah. I was going to say the dampening field's gone. Why don't we just transport out? Yeah, that could work too. I mean, if you want to take all the theatrics out of it, you could do so. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> right. yeah, well, it and mud the... and... <laughs> poor mud has been in the in the. Uh, shuttle probably having things jit guiding the door. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. forgot about mud. Apparently, so has the uh, writing team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mud's in the shuttle, so we can contact him to transport out. I kind of like the idea of a running gun fight, just because I want. Yeah, I'm good with whatever. I just wanted to say that. I like yeah. the idea of transporting out. <laughs> I'm injured. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, guys, I have survival. I have hand phasers. I have hand-to-hand -hand combat. I have tactical. I don't care how many focuses you have. I want to get out of here alive. <laughs> I'm shooting for, for daring security. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can do whatever. I'm just, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's transport. <laughs> <laughs> Call mud, mud. Ooh. Yep. Would the ship? Would the slip near still have power? Uh, the slip near upon the sorry upon the uh, removal of the dampening field field the slip near sh uh, systems do come back online do we just want to tell him to head towards home and call the station to transport that or transport to him mm -hmm. yeah uh, slip nears have two transporter pads so they could do two at a time or increase difficulty if they want to get more. I would say we're shooting at a three difficulty at the moment before any threat spends. So we can either make it a very difficult task to get all of us at once, or we do this in stages. I go for stages. All right, Keevan, Dolrum, you guys go first. Mm, I think Keevan and Demos should be first. Demos yeah. because he's injured, and Keevan because he's an engineer, and he'll have a better role of transporters than Mud will. I'm, I'm taking that's a good idea. security prerogative. I go last. Yeah, I'm taking chief medical officer prerogative. You go first. I'm going to take... Anyway, I'm going! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that I'm leading the away team and saying, you're going now. All right, sir. I'll grab Midas. Okay. I believe that this will be a difficulty three test. Um, control engineering from the slip near, which I guess will be mud, and can be assisted with uh, sensors plus security. Uh, or engineering. engineering, sorry. Yeah. I have mud sheet. What is he doing? Uh, control engineering. If he has oh, transfer. Uh, he does have an activation, so you could bump something. I gave him a value. Ah. Yes, it now has a value that says fits like a glove. Cool. And then for the slip near, you were using sensors engineering? Correct. Yep, and we need a crit here. Yeah, need a crit. Or mud to reroll his... Well, I don't know how fits like a glove would work in this situation. Okay. We get Are you people? Well, I will say that... Uh, um, I'm going to let that succeed at cost because that gives me enough threat 
to create reinforcements. As long as you don't cut off my arm, yeah. thanks. So, Keevan and Demos are out of here. And at this point, uh, more of these uh, knifey, handy things begin to climb both sets of the stairs now. Well, as soon as I uh, as soon as I see them, uh, area is going to do another area blast or attempt to anyway. Okay. And at this point, um, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, if you want to take over transporter duties, you um, bet. This will be a difficulty three test for another two, <clears throat> or if you want to try to get all three at once, that'll be a difficulty four. I like and we're using what skill for myself? Um, control engineering, and if you have transporters or even targeted scans, something like that would work. Yeah, let's go with just going for the two. Okay. I'm going to say Dura and Arya, go. Okay, so um, as he rolls, if Dalrum and Arya could roll their uh, phaser blast please yep 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 uh let's see so keevan got two and the slip near did not succeed oh and... well i got the two successes which means area attack uh seven here i'm also doing the area oh nice we even got momentum okay e awesome <clears throat> nice yeah okay <clears throat> Not so great on the Not so great on the roll. damage. So areas fall down. These ones do not. Use the momentum to re-roll. <laughs> yeah, you could yeah. spend that one momentum to re-roll. Or you could keep it for the final transporter test. Because I believe that area and Dura are the ones beaming out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. He wasn't going to be happy with Dura beam, beaming out. Yeah. You can take Security. that up with the commander. Because Unless... I told her to. I told him to go. <laughs> yep. As I'm back, I'm guessing I'm backing down as they're approaching. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so one more test, please. Um, control security and, uh, or, sorry, control engineering and sen sensors engineering. And take that momentum for that yeah. third die. Yeah. Because otherwise they're we'll going to close into melee. Yes, but I'm deadly with melee. That is true. Over oh, that. don't even have to roll for the ship. No, All right. I'll still do, because we yeah. could get momentum. Okay. So Another that's... Shot. You get it. Mm -hmm. uh, Commander, one of them is, is about to lunge right at you as it raises its bladed fists, and it does a run up the last couple stairs and uses its extra uh, sinewy body and launches itself directly at you. You prepare to defend yourself, but find that you don't have to, because as soon as you are ready to receive the blow, it fades away, and you are immediately brought back to the Slipnir. And at this point, Mud isn't even waiting. He's pushing the go button and taking the ship out. I imagine when I transport in, I'm in like a martial arts pose to be able to to, to <laughs> knock the blow away. Precisely. Uh, the moment I see Delrum beam him, I'm just sending a uh, text transmission to the station saying that we're aboard Slipnir and we're on our way back. All right. Well, in that case, uh, Hamasi is going to push the button. Push the button. Okay. Uh, I will give you. Well, I haven't used. Tomasi's, uh, so I will use... Let's see, who do we have tactical that is uh, on the station at the moment? Uh, uh, we could use Rafiti, or Rafati, um, Kael, Rainer, they're all on the station, they're all under tactical. Okay, what does their uh, control security look like? Rafati's a 14. Mm -hmm. Well for Rainer. Kyle Dude. is 15. 
Do any of them have focuses that would help here, though? No. A lot of them have hand phasers. Okay. And errors, no. I think Hamasi's going to fire then, because okay. she has a focus that applies. All right. Uh, so take one threat for the third die. And then we're just going to see what happens. Okay. Apparently I miss, uh, unless I challenge a value. Let's uh, let's take a look at my values here. Didn't you say you were burning your value or your determination? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'd, I'd have to challenge a value yeah. here to get a determination back. Oh. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. She has veteran. Hold the hell on. If I roll an effect here, I still have that. I don't nope. still have nope. it. <clears throat> All right. Well, I guess my first shot misses completely. The first shot goes wide, but the other station has no power to defend itself, so you basically can fire until you hit the darn thing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What? So for giggles. Yeah. <laughs> Not the most wow. damage I've seen out of that thing, but still pretty darn potent. Mm -hmm. uh, so because it is not shielded per se, and it's a scale five, uh, so four damage would make it through. Uh, of course, you have. I'm assuming you're using the phaser, so you could put all that into extra damage or piercing. I would put one of it to take off two resistance, and the other to do the spread effect. Hmm. And actually, no, it's area or spread because it's a phaser yeah. array. So it does spread, and then the other momentum we would keep. All right. Well, I'd reroll the zeros just to. New oh, yeah, yeah, good point. We can reroll those zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I gave myself one. That is the wrong thing. Six. <laughs> there. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we got it. You got it. Uh, so several beams lance out from all the multi from the multiple arrays from tip to toe on the station, and it carves the dread station apart like a ham at a Thanksgiving dinner. Very little is well, a lot. It will be salvageable after all this is said and done, if you wish. But the station is definitely no longer in one piece. Uh, the one question I do ask for you is what do you wish to do with the pods that are still in the tractor beam? I will send out a communication saying to all dread ships in the area, if you surrender, you will be treated fairly under the prisoner of war uh, guidelines as set forth by the Federation. However, if you continue to try and board this station, I will be forced to destroy you. Um... Once the station finally has died down, the power of tooth or the pods uh, have stopped moving as well. There's no active or there's no sign of activity coming from them. Right. Then uh, to Darval, I'm simply going to say, Mr. Darval, begin salvage operations and uh, make sure that we don't end up, you know, replicating these machines on our station. Aye, Captain. I shall coordinate with security. And then, yeah, Hamasi just unceremoniously goes back into her office. As far as she's concerned, the, do the job has been done. Nice. Okay. And so that ends the potential menace of the Dread Station. Um, do you guys wish to do anything after this? Any scenes you guys like to do? Hmm. I'll be in the robotics lab. Okay. Doing repairing myself. All right. Uh, does anyone wish to come with Demos? I think Aria would be there just to make sure that he, you know, if he needs medical assistance, she's there, but... Okay. Oh, uh, Neil will be there from the engineering side. Okay. Uh, then we'll make a small scene of this. Uh, robotics Bay. Here. <clears throat> okay. So, Demos is here, as is Aria and... Uh, Naya. Okay, so whoever wants to take the job of repairing him, that would be, um... Ah, mind fart. That would be control engineering. You said this was, uh, in the arm, right? Yeah. Excellent. Um, Demos, once he gets out of the top, like the EVA suit and out of his top of his shirt, he's just gonna depress two buttons on the front of his chest and he's gonna look the area and he's like, can you get the two in the back, same position? Sure. And I do so. 
a little bit of hissing, and the the shoulder, the whole arm just pops right off, drops to the floor. You're like, yep. Yeah. Yes. You grab that. He points to his arm. He's like, uh, yeah. He'll pick it up. Oh, this is I... unfortunate. Well, I can get to work and getting you patched up right away. So. Yeah, don't experiment with the arm, please. Even while it's disconnected, I can still feel it. I'll do my darndest. He's just look at you for a second, like, I, I can trust you, right? Midas, keep an eye on him. <laughs> Midas just buzzes right over top. And he said this was control engineering? That's right. Alright. Uh, just for fun, I'll pop his uh, determination of any machine is my play thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Midas will assist, because he does have exo-robotics. Appears to be two of them. I don't need to be two of them. There we go. Well, that's so that's four successes. Nice, nice. So two momentum. Cool. Mike <clears throat> does. Hey, he's All right. One more momentum. Cool. Yeah. Um, the um, alloys that the arm is made of are still baffling to you, despite you know a few months of being able to study him. But you're able to f replicate and stitch them up well enough. Yeah, there might be a bit of a scar, but nothing too severe. He can paint it if he wants to. <laughs> All right. Uh, Easy. And uh, so, right. so as bring it over the, here, Neo. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's <laughs> go. Like, bring it over here, Neo. Of course, and I'll just... Do I need to, like, press it up against you, or...? Yeah, just give it a second here. Uh, Aria, do you want to press the same two buttons again? Yep, I got it. Just hold them down, like, okay, shove it in, twist it, and then push it again. And in it goes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a couple of clicking sounds, he lets go, and he just moves forward a bit to have Aria let go. He's like, uh feels heavier now. I need to figure out how to resynthesize my own compound. Well, I mean, I hear the captain's got the refining station back up and running, so maybe we'll be able to do something with that. Um, not so much the material, it's that the method doesn't exist here. Ah. Yeah, the power requirements for some of the materials and components and, and their functionings Apparently makes Starfleet angry. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, that was a fun little adventure. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, Demos, as everyone is making to leave and you suit yourself back up and begin prepping for the day's adventures ahead, there's a small little voice in the back of your head that is alien to you. Why, hello, my friend. It is good to see you again. And on that note, we shall call the session. Okay. So I'd like to say thanks to my players, and thanks to everyone who watched. I hope we had a good session, and I will talk to you guys all later. Bye! Bye!